Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Many PCs have been very popular here on the channel over the last couple of months, so I thought I would get in a mini workstation for you to check out. This is from Lenovo. This is called their ThinkStation P3 Tiny. And it's called Tiny because this is a little tiny workstation that actually has a pretty good amount of capabilities under the hood here. Now this won't really be a gaming PC per se, but if you are in an industrial environment where you need a little more horsepower to do your workloads, but you don't have a lot of room, this is the kind of device that might be of interest. And we're gonna take a closer look at what this can and can't do in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this will vary widely. The entry configuration without a GPU is about $700 and then it goes up from there. This one is about $2,000 once it's all decked out. We've got an i7-14700 processor on board that has 20 cores eight performance cores and 12 efficiency cores, and they can handle a total of 28 threads on that processor. There is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM on board. It's DDR5-5600, and it also has the NVIDIA T1000 graphics card with eight gigabytes of video memory. And of course, that is very useful if you're doing video production and a whole bunch of other things that might take advantage of the GPU. The case here is quite solid, it is all metal. Now it's pretty easy to get inside of this. There is a screw on the back that you have to undo and then you can just slide off the top. And as you can see, we've got access to our GPU and our CPU. And if we lift up the heat sink and fan here, which is not too hard to get at, uh, you can see the CPU underneath. And this is actually a socketed uh, CPU. So you could, it looks like, swap that CPU out if you wanted to later for something else. So it is pretty upgradable and very easily serviceable. And that's one of the requirements, of course, of a corporate PC is being able to work on it when necessary. So that's the top part. It is a proprietary connector for the GPU. So you can't put in just about any GPU. You've got to go with the ones that they offer. And I believe the T1000 is the top of the line that you can get, at least in this form factor. And then if we pop open the bottom here, uh, you can see we've got the RAM and the storage. So right now you've got an extra NVMe slot on our loaner unit here, along with a terabyte of PCI Express 4 storage on the other slot. And we do have another opening on the memory side. So you can upgrade the memory and storage fairly easily here just by popping off the bottom panel. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you've got a good amount of them on this mini PC, a headphone microphone jack here, You've got three 10 gigabit per second USB ports on the front, two USB A's and a USB type C. This is not a Thunderbolt port, however. In fact, there's no Thunderbolt on here at all. Although Lenovo did tell me they have a version or an option to get Thunderbolt if you need it. I didn't see that configuration option on Lenovo's website, but if you are a corporate customer, they may offer that as an option. Now on the back, you've got four mini display port outputs connected to the GPU. And then these two display outputs, the display port and the HDMI, will run off of the Intel graphics. So you can have up to six external displays running at the same time. And the power connector here does require a separate power supply, <laughs> this big 300 watt one uh, that you'll now find also with Lenovo's workstation laptops and their gaming PCs. And as you can see, the power supply is almost as big as the computer itself. So you will need to connect that up. You also have a bunch of USB ports here on the back, one, two, three, and four. These are all USB three ports. Two of them are five gigabit per second ports and the other two here are 10 gigabit per second. There is a two, uh, one gigabit ethernet on the back, unfortunately not faster. We're starting to see 2.5 gigabit on a lot of those cheap mini PCs, but here uh, just a gigabit ethernet. And then you've got an antenna here that comes in the box that you can use for its Wi-Fi. This does have a Wi-Fi 6E radio on board. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. I think it goes without saying that your web browsing and all of your basic tasks here will be uh, well covered. As you can see, the uh, nasa.gov homepage here renders in almost instantaneously given how much horsepower we have to deliver that web page. So I'm not concerned about web browsing here. But let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve, 
which of course is a video editing application. And I've started working on a 4K 60 frames per second video file here. So we'll just load it up. Everything springs up very, very quickly as you can see. And what I'm gonna do first is just go in and drop in a cross dissolve here and lay it on the timeline. And we'll go ahead and hit the playback button here and see if there's any lag and there isn't any. And I wouldn't expect there would be any given that we've got a discrete GPU on here, 20 cores of CPU power. This is all going to work uh, quite nicely here. Now we can also play around with some video effects. So we can drop in, for example, comic book here and put that on uh, the clip on the end here. And if we play it back, we probably will see a little bit of lag on this one because it is a bit of a heavy lift. Um, but there you go, you've got it rendering out fairly quickly here. Now another use case I think this machine is very well suited towards is live video production. I use vMix, which is a great piece of software running in Windows that does all the video that you see here on the channel, including my live streams. And what's nice about a workstation device with an NVIDIA workstation card like this one is that you get more hardware video encoders available to you for use simultaneously. So typically the Quadro cards have an unlimited number of hardware encoders and decoders. This one will max out at eight. So it is more limited because it is a lower end GPU in the Quadro lineup, but it is more than what you would get on a consumer card. And on top of that, you've got a lot of CPU cores to make available to vMix or other software that might be doing live video production. And because this is small and because it's designed to be doing these kinds of workloads, I think the reliability on this will be much better than you would get with a consumer laptop or some other consumer piece of hardware for that purpose. All right, next up, I wanted to take a look at a consumer use case gaming that this isn't really designed for, but it does give you an idea as to what the GPU is capable of if you wanted to use it for some kind of game activity. And this is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're running it at 1080p at the lowest settings. For some reason, I'm getting shot at here. And this is running between 60 and 70 frames per second at that resolution. Now, of course, if you spent this much money on a gaming computer, you would do much better. But this is what you can expect out of it if you were thinking a mini PC with a GPU is appealing from a gaming standpoint. It's not all that much better, actually, in the gaming environment than some of the cheap Chinese mini PCs that we've been looking at that have current generation Intel and AMD processors. Now, the GPU on here is running with 896 CUDA cores. And again, it's got eight gigabytes of video memory. And that's about the equivalent of a GTX 1650 GPU. This is definitely an older architecture. But why don't we take a look at a couple of benchmarks that I ran that will illustrate really where the strengths of a workstation PC are and what it's designed to do. All right, first up, we're gonna look at the 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark test. This is a test that we run on most of the computers we review here on the channel. And we got there a score of 3,570. And you can see that's very closely aligned with a laptop that was running with a GTX 1650 GPU, at least when it came to the graphics performance. As you can see, the 20 cores do make a difference on the CPU side of that test. But have a look down below. We have a B-Link Sur 8 mini PC with a Ryzen 8745 and a GMK Tech NUC box that has an Intel Core Ultra 5. And both of those scored very close to this expensive workstation. So you can't just rely on a gaming benchmark test to see what this machine is capable of. So for workstations, I like to look at the spec benchmarks. And specifically, we looked at their new Workstation 4.0 benchmark. And what this does is it runs a bunch of applications that are popular in the enterprise world in a number of different industries. And then they give you a score. And the score that you get when you run the benchmark will be compared against a reference machine. And that reference machine will score a 1.0 on all of the tests on this benchmark. And you can see what the specs of that machine are there. So what I did is I ran the spec benchmark on our Lenovo here, but I also ran it on a GMK Tech mini PC with a Core Ultra 5. And that machine, although it scored close to this on gaming, as you can see here, things are very different when we look at some of these industry verticals. So for example, AI and machine learning, the Lenovo scored 1.26 above the benchmark machine and the GMK Tech scored slightly below, but the difference there is about 27%. Energy, and that's the energy industry. This machine ran a little under the benchmark or the reference machine, 
but it is still about 21% faster than the GM K-Tech. Financial services, probably a very good match for this device given its CPU performance, uh, came in at 0.92. Again, still under the reference, but still well above the GM K-Tech. Life sciences, 1.32 versus 0.83, almost 60% faster. Media and entertainment, namely video editing and other types of video work, 1.4 versus 0.92 and productivity and development 1.04 versus 0.73. So as you can see here, although it's not so fun, uh, the machine does in fact perform better doing the types of tasks that a workstation is designed for. Now this is not a powerhouse machine by any means, but its selling point is that it is in a very small form factor. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.1%. That means that you're going to lose just under 2% of its performance when it's placed under heavy sustained load. You can also see what the computer's temperatures were at the time that that test was running. So all in, pretty good performance here that will be consistent even when you are running it under load for a long period of time. The fan noise on it is a bit noisy when you do place it under load. I would compare it to like a gaming laptop, so you will hear those fans really working on this one. Fan noise is probably less of an issue on an industrial machine than it might be in a home environment, but just be prepared. You got small fans on here and they do make a good amount of noise. Now, when it's under heavy sustained load, I'm seeing that power supply pulling about 300 watts out of the wall. When it's idle, like it is right now, I'm looking at 25 to 35 watts or so. So it is pretty good at managing its power, but because you got the GPU on board here, along with that big Intel CPU, the power consumption on this will be a lot more than perhaps an N100 based mini PC that we often like to look at here on the channel. Now, normally when we get to the end of these videos, we like to talk about Linux compatibility. And most of the time you can install Linux on these machines, but you don't get support for it by the manufacturer. This is supported by Lenovo for having Linux installed on it. In fact, when you buy the machine and custom configure it, one of your options is to have Linux pre-installed. So they have Ubuntu here that is officially supported. If you choose that over Windows, you actually save a hundred bucks. So there is good Linux support here, and that includes support for its GPU and all the hardware that you might configure along with it. So all in, if you're looking for a small workstation, this will certainly get you there. There are some compromises on performance, no doubt, um, but as you saw in our benchmarks, it is quite capable at running a lot of the things that you might do in an industrial or uh, other type of professional environment. It's certainly not for consumers necessarily. It's definitely not for gaming, but the performance is certainly there for the applications that can make use of the Quadro GPU along with that 20 core CPU. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.